Good morning. Pleasure to be able to uh, update you on Fission Uranium uh, and its PLS project, uh, which hosts the Triple R deposit, one of the world's premier undeveloped uranium projects. Uh, do a bit of a geographical swivel, so located in North America. Um, it's a Canadian project. It's in the province of Saskatchewan, home of the, the world's biggest and, well, I'm not necessarily the biggest, but most certainly the highest grade and some of the largest uranium projects in the world and an important supplier of uh, uranium to the world for nuclear power. Um, just give you a few key points on our thesis here um, of, of why uh, we consider this to be the right project and the right time for development. Um, if you've watched, pay attention to the uranium sector, you've probably seen some great improvements in the last couple of years. Um, it's really a, as a result of, of the focus on uh, clean, green energy and, and the realization that nuclear is such an important part of, of the, that, that equation as the electrification of the world continues and, and, and uh, countries grappling with, with coming off of uh, the dependency on fossil fuels for providing, providing power for electricity. So, Uranium is uh, certainly uh, increased in, in its strength in, in the, as a price of a commodity. Um, it's currently trading around $54. Um, and, and we think that this is just the beginning of a, of a good, strong, long-term bull market. We do have a world-class uranium district where our project is located. As I mentioned, the province of Saskatchewan ranked very highly uh, year after year by a number of, of agencies that do rate mining investment. I think it was uh, number one or two in the Fraser Institute's um, assessment of 2021. Um, we built a team. We've gone from being an extremely successful explorer, uh, developer with uh, you know a high discovery rate to um, moving the project forward. Um, we have a, a project that we're moving through the feasibility stage right now. Uh, we could see this as being an eventual producing asset in the province of Saskatchewan. Um, so we're our, we built our team accordingly. One of the hallmarks of the, uh, the PLS Triple uh, R deposit is that it, it has the potential to be one of the world's lowest cost uh, operators. We're looking at, uh, at estimated costs of just over $7 US a pound U308. That puts it in league with the lowest operators anywhere in the world, so certainly in the same category as the, uh, the operation, say, in Kazakhstan, which uh, does dominate the market. Um, but the Athabasca Basin, with its high-grade deposits, and ours in particular, uh, are very competitive on, on a cost basis. Uh, there is a very clear path of, of, um, to development of our project. Uh, as I mentioned, we're on feasibility study right now. Uh, the hurdles that we... The regulatory hurdles, I think they're, they're pretty clear. They're well understood. The province has a, a great history of being able to, to move projects forward through to production. Really, you have to, um, there's no shortcuts to doing so. It's a you know, fairly extensive pathway through the regulatory side, but it is, um, you know, it's, it's well known. And, and I think that, um, you know, we're certainly on, uh, we're hitting all the milestones that we need to to be able to bring Triple R to production. Uh, I won't get into the details on this slide, but I do encourage you to look on our website. There's a lot of supply-demand um, stories here, but I, I, I guess you know there's just several points on here that illustrate that the uranium market is uh, in an upward trend, uh, and we, we think that we are at the beginning of a bull market. But just geographically situated, where are we? Where, uh, as I mentioned, in the northern part, of the province of Saskatchewan in Canada, so sitting basically geographically in the center. Um, this is an important uranium district. This is uh, where all of Canada's production uh, comes from and has probably for the last 60 or so years out of the Athabasca Basin. Um, we're probably ranked uh, second or third um, in the world for, for supplying uranium to, um, you know, for, to, to nuclear reactors worldwide. It's, it's been an important long-term supplier, will be so for the next several decades. Uh, you know, as you look out probably 50 years, I think the, the Athabasca Basin will continue to be a dominant story. Our project located on the southwest side, that's what you see with the big yellow star there, Triple R deposit. Uh, we made a discovery around 10 years ago, and, um, you know, it's, it's, there's been other significant discoveries nearby, and I do see this as an emerging 
new mining district in these in the Athabasca Basin. There hasn't been production in the southwest side yet, but uh, obviously with the the scale and the the types of deposits that have been found, I think the next decade will prove to be uh, you know a, probably the the main focus of, of development in the Athabasca Basin. Uh, this is just a real quick schematic showing the triple R deposit um, it's comprised of five zones. We plan to develop this as an underground operation. Uh, it's close to surface and uh, in the Athabasca Basin that's kind of unique. A lot of deposits are several hundred meters below the surface and below a sandstone layer. We uh, have neither of those issues. We're close to surface and we're in the basement rock that underpins uh, most of the Athabasca, well, all the Athabasca Basin, but also the areas outside. What the benefit being there is that much more competent rock, easier to mine, uh, less technically challenging than, than some of the operations within the sandstone basin. So um, we're looking at conventional underground mine development, uh, and the deposit starts around 50 meters below the surface. There's five pods that make up the deposit, and only two of them have really been studied to the, to the extent that we can wrap economics around it. Um, I think in the feasibility study, though, we're changing that. We'll be bringing in a third zone, the 840 West, which we did some drilling on last summer. Uh, I think we've got the, the right kind of data that we need in order to bring the 840 into the um, feasibility study. So we're looking at... Uh, you know, about 100 and overall a resource that, that's around 135 million pounds, high-grade uranium. Um, and as I said, we'll be looking at feasibility study on those three zones, the 840, 00, and 780. Uh, one, these are just some keys that we found in the pre-feasibility study completed three years ago in 2019. As I mentioned, very low um, operating costs, projected operating costs around $7 pound, U308. Being an underground mine has a very small footprint. Uh, construction time should be uh, just under around three years and hopefully a little bit less. I think uh, in our feasibility study, I think we'll be able to show that we can develop it in less than three years. Uh, very encouraging economics, looking at an IRR after tax around 25%. Um, and the NPV currently in the, in the pre-feasibility study at $700 million Canadian. Um, we, I'm sure the price of uranium that we use in the pre-fees was $50. The price of the commodity now is $54 and, and moving further north, so I, I expect a higher number to be used in the um, feasibility study. So, you know, we'll see how that does affect the overall numbers. But pretty, uh, pretty impressive economics at $50 uranium, and I think that the, you know, that's a, a real baseline bottom uh, number. Hopefully we'll be able to use higher prices. Just... Uh, quickly to go through the where we are in a timeline. We're currently in a phase we call the environmental assessment phase. Uh, that's completion, working to complete the feasibility by the end of uh, this year, 2022. So in December, we should be completed on the, on the feasibility study. We're on the pathway required on the permitting regulatory side to be able to advance a project forward through to eventual um, assessment for, for approval for production. And working uh, with First Nation um, issues and agreements, uh, which we want to have secured and in place before we move to the next phase, which is the environmental impact assessment, um, which we anticipate would take about two to three years. Construction beginning in 2026, looking to be a producing asset towards the end of this decade, or maybe 2029, 2030. Um, quickly, on the, on the corporate side, we're... Uh, very well financed. We have about $40 million in the Treasury right now, a market cap of around $600 million Canadian. Uh, we're, um, you know, you can see the, the share institute or the, the uh, shareholder wheel here. We're, we have about 20, 25% institutional ownership. We do have a strategic partner with uh, China General Nuclear, one of the large Chinese state owned utilities uh, that have a 14% interest in the company and uh, roughly 50, 60% of our shares are, are held by, by uh, retail. So thank you very much.